Namaste everyone. I'm welcoming all to this session of Guru Bodha. We are moving on to session five of this Guru Bodha series that we are conducting on every Sunday. I am Dr. Jerry Hebar and I dedicate this and all of my works at the holy feet of my spiritual guru, Dr. A. Chandrasekhar Udupa. Uh, Dr. A. M. B. Guraja sir is our problem solver. Every week we collect a bunch of questions, problems that we have in our clinical practice when we just uh, present it to him and take his guidance. So he is a, a professor in an Ayurveda college in Shumoga and also a, a very busy practitioner. His uh, clinic is uh, Davala Pentacare Ayurveda Center. It has Panchakarma unit and it also uh, inpatient care facilities in Shumoga, Karnataka. I cordially welcome you, sir, uh, to this program. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Janardhan. A very warm wish for all of us on the uh, holy occasion of our Independence Day, India. So uh, it, it said, Janane Janma Bhumishta Swarga Dapi Gariyasi. So there is no place as comforting and as assuring and as uh, energ energizing and nourishing as a lap of the mother and also the nation. We are very thankful for in our country, India, that it is not only giving us the shelter and the safety that you know, our, we, the women and the, all the family members can survive and thrive, and it has also gifted uh, you know, many wonders to the world, including yoga and, of course, our beloved science of Ayurveda. So, uh, Guru Raja, sir, you have a couple of words on this, please. I, I, I also wish all the, my countrymen on the 75th Independence Day and all the best on this occasion. Let us all come together, make our Indianness and Indian culture great. And we also contribute from our side to make our country great. And I hope we are doing it best with the use of Ayurveda and such cultures and such practices and holy traditions, a age old tradition and a legacy. We are being just taking forward to the next levels and hope it will reach to new corners of the world. On this occasion, I wish everybody all the best and success and be healthy in their life. Thank you so much, sir. Let's take up one interesting uh, question. We have in our markets now the Chavan Prash ice cream and Chavan Prash soft rolls. If I remember correctly, when Ayurveda was introduced to the Western world, you know, Chavan Prash was one of the uh, leading uh, you know, product that, that started selling good and it entered the market. And most of the Westerners, they were using I, this Chavan Prash as jam over bread for their breakfast. On one side, it's a good thing that, you know, Chavan Prash is Chavan Prash if it is made really well and it will be having all the nourishing qualities and all. And another point on the other side of the argument could be that, you know, it's getting repackaged with the, you know, all the biscuits and other cookies and whatnot. So it may not, it may not be as healthy a practice and we may be killing or we may be deteriorating the grandeur and the uh, fame that the humble John Prash has uh, maintained all these uh, years. Uh, your comments on this, Guru Raja sir? Definitely. What I have been told in original classical text and it has to be used in same dignity and same fashion without altering to as per our needs. So that is the first priority. But we have seen many a times for example, Rasayana, a term is there. We don't find an equivalent term for that. So then they went with a, some coin term as immunomodulator. So we don't try to accept the terms as it is. So in the sense that we try to make it something in that also, which is not of us to convert into a different set of things. For example, oats has come to India. It has been propagated as something different, but ultimately it ended us as oats upma. So we tried to make it into our own things. This is all because of our tongue. Our tongue demands so much of taste and so much of alterations. Many times what I have observed is people are fond of something which is told in uh, particularly a pretty language like English. If it is a said in a chavana prasha, it won't sounds good. If I say Chavana Prash rolls, so it sounds good. 
so that is the one where it is uh, trying to catch up on that part uh, the marketing people they are in uh, in cashing on that aspect when it comes to the quality of that if they are straight away feeling the chavana prasha inside that then it is good to some extent but they don't make it or use it as it is but they try to mix it in some or the other formats or some alterations they will make it i can't even digest a chavana prash ice cream it is not possible chavana prash cannot become an ice cream ice cream itself is a different in ayurveda very clearly said whatever we eat it should be snigdha and it should be hot little bit ushna while consuming of course for certain things relaxation can be given but it cannot be so cold ice cream is such a, such a cold material you cannot take it in only on certain occasions it is allowed but to that to in a small quantities but still as a whole ice cream is again as the agni of a person and we are if you are trying to sell ice cream in the name of chavana prash or chavana prash in the name of ice cream both are not good to the ayurvedic perspective so it is better chavana prasha should be consumed as a chavana prasha it should be at one reference we say that chavana prasha how it should be consumed a chavana prasha for the purpose of rasayana effect one has to consume in such a form that chavana prasha should replace the morning food so such much quantity chavana prasha should be taken not like one spoon two spoons but of course we are not having such a agni to digest all those things and maintain the homeostasis so that becomes a huge problem later on so at least if we take it take it in a real sense in the market also chavana prasha nowadays real chavana prasha as per the formula of the texts if you go by that it is not so tasty in order to improve its taste even in the market available so many brands they have added more sugar into that so such more sugar may cause a problem which is not good whatever the combination classically has been told it has to be consumed and each rasa or the taste has its own implication in the body we don't want to for the sake of palatability improve it by adding extra sugar or something like that so it is not a good criteria so chavana prasha may be in the form of biscuit and chocolate to some extent okay but not as ice cream i, I can't adjust that with that ice cream cannot be with chavana prasha you can sell anything in the name of chavana prasha is not good yeah i mean we take external things like words converts into upma upma and all mm. and uh, there was a famous video very recently circulated that a japanese sushi is coming in to our market a, a funny video was made that you know if you make, if you bring sushi into into our indian market we'll make sushi upma we'll make a uh, Uh, you know sushi roti will make tandoori sushi will be uh, you know parotta sushi you know we are going to kill the sushi as it is and people because we we have like 1.3 1.4 billion sushi will no more be sushi and it was kind of a warning for the japanese uh, people not to bring sushi here and this chavan prash actually when we make it in our you know vaise uh, kalpana uh, this one you i mean i still remember in our though you were uh, dravagana hod you were coming into vaise kalpana practicals and you were helping us to make haridra kanda so impression what now so when we make it usually it will be more sour and lesser sweet but market available they make it more sweet and we cannot even uh, even experience the sourness and and also champrash when we actually make it as a form like it will be kind of pulpy but now it is kind of a ready made jam that we get uh, it's not a good habit uh, sir no it's actually what they are doing is they are violating at the various levels see we have a very good good manufacturing practice when we try to do it as per the classics it comes in a very different format but people are making it in a very different type of things recently we are going for manufacturing of gugulus at our uh, facility when we try to come out with the gugulu the color of uh, final finishing product of gugulu is something different what the market gugulu samples are so in market uh, there are leading companies and brands they are produced with a black colored gugulu uh, tablets but when i prepared gugulu it won't be of such color so we are shocked to see that then when we repeated the procedure without violation of the uh, what the process has been uh, told in the classical text good manufacturing practice then ultimately it came as a dark brownish to brownish in color not a black one 
so then when we crush it open the other products available in the market and we wanted to know how they are doing it then it is a clear cut coating something they are adding to make it a black uh, that is not once again a violation of the things many such things are there in the market to um, give a palatability and appearance and all those things but i don't know it may uh, by doing that that may even uh, ditch the original clinical efficacy of the drug so it should be very careful while um, selecting these uh, things so we should not violate and disturb the formulas which is already been given yeah we have got a question here on champrash uh, by dr padmavati ji announced uh, madam uh, you have been our homeopathy expert in our easy ayurveda whatsapp group uh, many thanks for participating and uh, and uh, you know coming up with uh, you know uh, homeopathic view points on different case studies thank you very much so her question is how one can take champrash who has diabetes and hyperlipidemia whether it affects Yeah, lipid levels. Why do you want to go for a for a person with hyperlipidemia and uh, diabetes? Why you want to go for a chavana prash? We can have that effect without going for chavana prash, like jam, which is contraindicated for him in these conditions. Better we can go for the uh, tifla churna, ramalaki churna. It will be beneficial. Ramalaki churna with uh, honey. That will be beneficial. I I don't think I mean the amount of uh, heat that is added. it will not cause any much increase in lipid levels uh, honestly sir no it is not the question of lipids because see we have been uh, designed by the god in such a way that if we don't take any lipid from outside also our body is able to produce a intrinsic cholesterol you know it produces from the carbohydrates even the rich sugar can be converted into triglycerides later into fats and all those things so it's not a big issue to get a cholesterol inside the body so it is not a big issue some even ghee is taken and it is going to increase no it is not like that but for the carbohydrate content particularly case of diabetes so sugar is there in that chavana uh, prasha minimum 30 to 40% sugar will be there so that is not a good uh, combination or a yoga to be given to a patient of uh, diabetes yeah so uh, what are the alternatives sir no alternative is that you can go for straight away amlaki churna with honey pure form of honey amlaki churna that will also give and trifala churna honey that also gives a similar effect maybe chavana uh, prasha has a much more ingredients but the dominant quality present in that is due to i mean uh, effect is due to present of quality of uh, amlaki in that so that same thing can be achieved by using amlaki churna yeah. even amlaki ganavati you can go for it mona badji has raised her hand uh, can you please go ahead with your question madam mona badji yeah. So I just had a very quick question when you talk about the alteration of the herbal uh, when they make the pills or something and you say the color is changed. So why don't we just in olden days they just used to do the powders, right? So what is the why don't we not just use the mixture of the powders and now we are trying to get the pills? What is the better options if we have the powders? No, it is not like that. Gugulu is a, a different set of uh, preparations in Ayurveda where ah. we have got more than um, for 14 15 varieties of gugulus are there like trifala gugulu okay. gugulu maha yoga raju gugulu um, uh, vatari gugulu navaka gugulu like that there are plant kanchanara gugulu kaishora gugulu there are series of it's, a, it's a totally a typical type of classification of drugs just like how uh-huh. churna is there how kashaya is there or gritha is there or ghee or taila like that gugulu is also a kalpana a variety of yogas that has been prepared so say trifala gugulu so we have a gugulu powder and a trifala powder if we do mixture of those two does that give the same effect as the classified uh, formulas definitely it will become an a best alternative but it cannot be the same as of trifala gugulu because while okay. trifala gugulu we make go for all this combine a combination and then afterwards there will be agni samskara some boiling or something like that and then trituration okay. will be there so such uh-huh. process will not be there just simply mixing these powders together but uh-huh. the result will be somewhat equivalent to the original triflago gulu okay that's what i wanted to understand because like suppose we do not get all the formulations here right it's very hard sometimes yeah. it's it's a tough to even like we want to give a client but from suppose we order something online even on amazon it takes like couple of days or weeks sometimes 
Yeah. So then it is harder to start the treatment right away when you need to give something right away. Then I feel like if we get powders stocked up and powder basically stays longer or I don't know how the shelf life of the powders. But sometimes I, I have to do that because it's very hard for us to get all the formulations here. Especially in India, you have thousands of names of the formulation, which we don't learn here. That's a, that's a reason. Uh, powders are, have a um, shorter li uh, shelf life, shelf life. Okay. comparatively uh, as per the text it is up to four months to six months if it is kept in a very good container airtight container even even up to one year no problem huh. but okay. if it is a air sealed and even a vacuum evaporated and air tight containers then it is three years also it is there so uh -huh. uh, it's not a big issue of maintaining uh, from the uh, divide of moisture and all those things. If you could uh -huh. able to do that, then it is a uh, best alternative for the classical preparation. No problem. We can go for it with the combinations of those type of powders. Thank you, doctor. Thank you very much for your. Thank you, Dr. Herbert. Thank you. Thank you, Maradi. We are actually supposed to take, I mean, replace the entire breakfast with Chomprash, but it's not that so possible for every, you know, day to day common and a healthy person. Pradipaji asks, asks, what is the recommended dosage of Chomprash for a healthy individual? It depends. It depends on 5 to 10 grams of that is sufficient. 5 to 10 grams in an adult healthy person. What is the best time to consume it? Some test books uh, recommend it with milk. Is it Amla contraindicated with milk? The ideal time to you know, take the um, uh, Chomprash is early morning which is usually the best time after the um, morning all uh, attending the nature call and uh, cleaning yourself and uh, you know, brushing the teeth and all the all those things after completion of that first thing on an empty stomach if you consume jhana prasha that will be good and always whenever such lehas or jhana prasha something like that it is taken followed by uh, consumption of milk is also advised because it's the best anupana which will help the product to get uh, digested and absorbed very fastly. And of course, if it is uh, consuming a milk followed by Amalaki, is it not the uh, Viruddha Ahara or something like incompatible? No, it is not incompatible. Our uh, stomach itself has a lot of uh, acidic in nature that will get um, uh, whatever, whenever you take milk that will be, get curdled very easily. So it's not going to cause any much difference to us. Certain occasions where we don't want to mix the uh, sour material to the milk and consume it. That is not advisable. But when followed by, if it is taken in these occasions, there are exceptions. It is allowed. And also in the context of Viruddha uh, Hara, uh, it is told. So when two ingredients are told as contraindicated with each other, so that is respect to only those two ingredients. But here we are, Amla is taken, though it is sour. We are, uh, you know, boiling it in a kashaya, then frying it in ghee, then adding with the kashaya and, and doing all those things. So, sourness will be reduced. And also, in, in, in that context, Saravanga Sundari Tika clearly explains that, you know, if the two are there with many other ingredients, then the combination, the permutation combination will be so very different that this Virudhara context might not exist. It may not open the entire context as a whole uh, wholesome it cannot be accepted or um, exactly matches with this present condition where whenever after the following followed by any layers if we consume the milk uh, it is not a criteria yeah next uh, uh, dr vijay lakshmi asks can we replace chavamprash with suitable, suitable kashayams so there are two aspects to it so ch replacing chavamprash with kashayams so kashayam as a uh, in a dosage form, it is told as Kantasya Kashanath, Prayo Kashayat and Roganam Chapi Kashanath Kashayam. So, uh, it is Kashaya by design. Uh, of course, it depends a lot on ingredients that we are using. But by design, Kashayas are basically, for the most part, used for Karshana purpose. And with Rasayana, like Champrash, uh, we are trying to enhance the qualities of dhatu, rasa adi dhatu, that's why rasayana. Uh, but still, something like, uh, say, vidarya adi kashaya, all those things can be used as a replacement, sir? It can be used, even astavarga kashaya can be used, vidarya adi kashaya can be used, but, 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 but it cannot be totally wholesome of what chavana prasha is. Chavana prasha is something different. 
it cannot be replaced it may be something which is a new formula if it is given or consumed as a replacement it will be best a substitution but cannot be the exactly the same yeah uh, uh, manisila ji asked the same question sir uh, sugar free chamb rash is available so can we give it to diabetics no it it can say it becomes a best alternative but cannot be the same whenever we alter it as per our requirement when we alter it it is not the original formula so yeah. it is the best alternative i i i think this sir what can we replace with i mean with cow milk also what can we replace with we are not trying to fit in chamra share we are trying to fit in rasayana rasayana is the end result that we are trying to see Mm. we are not trying to fit in champrash here so sugar free champrash is not champrash so when you remove sugar it, it is not champrash you know it has to have the tariff that is in the ingredients otherwise it's not yeah that's a, that's what i'm telling you see recently one of the company has come to me uh, with their product it's uh, made out of uh, lashuna and he was explaining to me sir our lashuna is devoid of that garlic odor sir and then i said it is not lashuna then lashuna one of the important thing because of the tikshna gandha if the tikshna gandha which is required in the present in that it is due to the allyl sulfide and all those things and if you remove those things and to make it uh, smell less or even uh, to garlic without smell and it cannot be is the garlic hole if so we we cannot uh, expect a drug in the name of drug like like for example we are expecting the effect of sarpagandha but we are taking the reser pain and uh, we anticipate that all the effects of sarpagandha should come from the reser pain this is not possible we are uh, accepting ashwagandha taking vitanoloids and anticipating the all the effect of ashwagandha it is not possible whatever combination been laid down in the text has to be taken in that sense only any alteration is a best alternative it cannot be the same and um, if you want to change that name change it to some other names and take the licensing and a new product will be there otherwise why you want to sell it and brand it on the chavana prash because popularity of chavana prash is there that you want to sell in that name so that's why people can easily understand what is chavana prash for that purpose they are trying to make it in the name of chavana prash yeah uh, a comment has come from pradipa ji that however in the west people are so used to reading the calorie label and the first thing they see on chavana prash is sugar content and as if this can uh, be it can be made with reduced sugar etc so i see where the question was coming from no see reason is uh, west is always uh, very good in marketing what i have understood when they wanted to market the hydrogenated fat they killed the cow ghee they said all nonsense about the coconut oil they said all things about the cow ghee bad bad effects and all those things then ultimately they said it is not going to harm anyway first they killed us with their uh, are you brushing your teeth with the charcoal are you brushing your teeth with the salt you are idiots then we they made us to feel shy then they presented uh, their uh, toothpaste and all those things and after 30 years or 40 years now they are asking whether your toothpaste has salt whether your toothpaste has charcoal and they have come out with that so that is the word i am telling you don't go by these uh, way of things understanding understand the language of ayurveda in terms of ayurveda mm, things are explained in ayurveda try to understand in that language only don't try to translate it to the other type of uh, sciences or the parameters or tools then it becomes vata becomes air uh, pitta becomes uh, fire and this is not exactly the things so you try to understand these things yeah even colgate has come out with charcoal and toothbrush yeah i mean that's what uh, our our sir was explaining that we are coming full, full circle a charcoal toothpaste i mean charcoal your tooth will, 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 will look very dirty then we have come up with you know, salt and charcoal and toothpaste so i mean this is a common problem with the western people when they uh, approach the western ayurveda practitioners so what they do is they want to uh, drag you into the sugar and the chemicals thing so as an ayurveda practitioner so you have to drag them into ayurveda rasaguna veera vipaka uh, area and try to convince them that it's not uh, you know net effect of uh, and a sugar is required so as to add some nourishing qualities and it, it's not like a, you know chemical sugar it's kind of unrefined sugar somehow you have to you know use some ayurveda terms uh, either try to 
convince them or at least confuse them. So anyway, it's so you have to explain it, try to explain the concepts in Ayurveda. So that's how that that's actually the right way to you know substantiate our products. No, we we can't blame the Westerners because they have been trained in that manner because their schooling or education is developed in such a manner they will be and easily understand about the nutrition values calorie values and all those things so they know it that and they try to understand everything in that direction it is not bad but when they are trying to understand an ayurvedic product in that line then they need to understand the tools of ayurveda and then understand that will that is the only thing what we can do we cannot simply say that uh, there is no value for calorie or no value for um, sugar and all those things no that is not right the nutrition value and calorie value all has its own uh, plus points that should be kept in mind but it doesn't mean that everywhere the same uh, principle should not be applied it from uh, place to place and uh, from product to product the things will change that we need to understand just a little bit drifting off topic here that in uh, i mean in western countries i've seen in in a rush to translate ayurvedic terms into uh, you know english terms or like give more sense to it to the common layman you know doshas are called as humors uh, humors are uh, I, i think it's uh, related to uh, some other medical science it doesn't uh, carry the exact meaning and all so as an ayurveda practitioner we should be using ayurveda terms and we should be very careful not to translate our terms in a very wrong way so that it it entirely gives another another different meaning altogether we should not uh, translate in a very vaguely we need to understand them and wherever it is not possible don't replace it use the those terminologies as it is when we use the terminologies as it is slowly people start understanding it i'll tell you one thing some of my patients they come to me if i say for example recently i had this one experience a village woman she came to me with a lot of stiffness in the joints and she was suffering from arthritis it was a rheumatoid arthritis so i said to her because i thought that she is not and she could not able to follow the english i said to her that you are suffering from amavata then she made her face like that then i inquired what happened then uh, there her relatives were telling that uh, she has been feeling that uh, she has been caught by a, such a disease which is very old aged and somewhat uh, it is somewhat amavata something like that then i said this is called rheumatoid arthritis in english this is what you are suffering from then she, she she felt somewhat felt quite comfortable because people are very fond about the english terminologies so if you th- if you tell something in english but their understanding is equally same if it, uh, she can't even understand amavata and she even she can't understand rheumatoid arthritis but something which is told in english sounds better that's what she felt and she was convinced that she was suffering from rheumatoid arthritis not amavata this is the fate what we can do so for that reason i said we need to inculcate that habit of promoting our terminologies so that that terminology has been become popular and all all together that people will try to understand and um, read and pronounce in the same manner it should be pradeep ji has written humors are from greek if you, if you start getting into their way of ex- explaining things and, and what not it all will gain momentum at some point and we will lose you know our own identity uh, of ayurveda as such it, it becomes something entirely different they just take our essence and run away and make it all together different science so it should not happen and you know for that using the right terminologies protecting our science as a whole with proper ter- terminologies is uh, so very important definitely we need to understand that we need to use our terminologies we need to propagate our terminologies so that people start using it and ultimately it becomes very popular and it is known to everybody that's what the ultimate intention of that yes please go ahead pradeep ji hey, namaste thanks dr janardan dr guru raja i uh, because we are talking about all the comparison between west and east right um and i just wanted to bring bring it out that here uh, i think i think ayurveda has become such a way for people just want to know what their constitution is they just want to know what their uh, 
prakriti or vikriti are but uh, compared to india i i see that the diagnosis is mostly made that like there here the belief is everybody has to do a questionnaire to understand if they are a vata pitta or kapha body type and then the diagnosis and then then the um you know symptomatic approach and all that is given but um, the whole pattern is in the genesis in india is they, there is no questionnaires but it's mostly based on uh, the nidana and how how is something formed and just understanding like the consultation can be like 10 minutes but within 10 minutes the vaidya is able to understand what is happening based on the disease based on the roga but uh, and also here a lot of lot of clients or uh, patients do come to vaidyas and practitioners just to understand just tell me what am i am i vata pitta or kapha so i do not know where this divide began but i just wanted to bring this up and do you see that which one is which way is right is it because the vaidyas in india are more experienced and they don't need to go through this questionnaire they understand it quickly based on the symptoms and pathogenesis or um is it is it wrong to go from the beginning go ask them tell me what your prakriti is tell me everything that you experienced as a child and what's happening now and then i will i'll be able to assess you see there is a whole sort of uh, complexity here we need to understand certain things prakriti of a person is from the beginning till the end from birth to the death and it is fixed so we need to evaluate and establish what prakriti he is this is only to understand his body nature but when you try to do that when a patient is having a disease and he has approached you then many of the questionnaire part is not knowing to us it's only given answers given by the patient so patient may be sometimes wrongly predicting the things or wrongly conveying the things may make us to land in a wrong interpretation so prakriti analyzing of a person may not be always be influencing the his diseases but it is only a supportive factor second thing in india when a patient approaches us we try to analyze the present complaint what for what he has come to us so when such complaints are there we try to analyze on based on what vata pitta kapha is these lakshanas have evolved so accordingly we treat it we are not going to treat the prakriti of the person we are treating the condition here so once we are treating the condition then automatically things will settle down this is point number 1 point number 2 in the west the people are coming to ayurveda or such other things or even in india only when the other system of medicine is exhausted or they are closed their doors for your problems then only or afterwards realizing that i should go for ayurveda such type of alternative medicines because there is a lot of side effects in this synthetic drugs or i don't want to take it or let me try an alternative methodology for this so all these criteria when such a patient comes to us or a client comes to us definitely he will have lot lot sort of questions then it is our duty to quench his thirst whatever the questions he comes with we should be able to convince them on the lines of, of the fundamental principles when we could able to do do that then automatically the client will be convinced then you can try to give that medicine and of course when you finalize the things of uh, nidana and everything lakshanas when you analyze these things and ultimately there will be always a presenting complaint very annoying complaint and real thing first of all when such a things have been been uh, trying to analyze it we need to understand whether it is really part of the disease or it is a upadrava it's a complication of the disease if it is a complication of the disease no need to treat the complications first go for the directly to the vyadhi or the disease second thing when we are trying to analyze those things try to understand whether it is a striking feature or not for example in case of a skin disease the most striking feature in case of a male when he comes many a times what i have observed is is itching so intense itching is there i don't want to um, tolerate this you give something 
but similar condition when a female comes to me with the same sort of itching associated with discoloration her interest will be on discoloration along with itching she is worried about the discoloration also whereas in case of a male he is not worried about the discoloration so this is a perspective changes from person to person we need to understand but as a physician treating physician we need to first ascertain what doshas are present and how the lakshanas are evolved whether it is alarming whether it is going to cause any problem or it is a superficial one it is a deep seated one when we analyze the things then we need to go for vyadi pratyanika chikitsa to some extent lakshana chikitsa to some extent and to some extent we need to understand that whether this particular condition falls under which criteria because all the diseases are can be classified into four categories sukha sadhya kashta sadhya yapya and asadhya where this particular person is in comes uh, falls into the category then accordingly convince then follow the treatment then comes the treatment criteria what should be in, uh, whether the patient should be taken for shodhana or shamana once again when you understand there is a bahu dosha there is a lot lot of lakshanas and the patient is having lot of shakti as well as agni and but still there is lot of kandu pidaka and glani and such type of things are there then he is a suitable person for the shodhana chikitsa if it is a durlabha I mean a weak person a krusha pair person but dosha is profoundly increased in him also do it with sadhya virechana sadhya shamana sadhya vamana like something like that with a short duration with a short span or a modi- modified short forms of panchakamas then the things will settle down so it it all comes by little bit little bit experience and certain things by the following the concepts in a very rigid manner if you follow the uh, things in a very rigid manner definitely you will understand it uh, west teaching the ayurveda in a something different manner when season is all a different perspective what we can say but all together understanding a prakriti of a person is important to know his nature because for example a vata prakriti person in vata jakala if he gets vata jivikara then his disease nature will be very strong vata so that to understand that we need to go for the prakriti analysis otherwise even conditions can be managed first then about his prakriti and to uh, add a few couple of points So I mean, there is a question that prakriti analysis or disease treatment, which is important. So for what the client has come to you, if the client only wants to have prakriti analysis uh, with half an hour of questionnaire, so that is the purpose of client's visit to your clinic. Then that is the thing that is, is to be done. But suppose a client has uh, you know has fallen and has an elbow elbow pain, he doesn't want to you know wait and fill the form for like half an hour. So he wants his he has got to be fixed so which is right or which is wrong uh, so both are right uh, in in both contexts uh, not uh, worrying much about the prakriti but you know concentrating only on disease when the client has come to you specifically for that disease so that is right here but in case of uh, if the client comes to you just for you know ayurvedic analysis of their body and mind without any say, disease or a, anything uh, related with disease then doing prakriti analysis and based on the doshas are uh, suggesting a few things that also makes sense i mean prakriti will have some effect on the disease uh, for sure but when the disease is chronic it's staying for more than 6 months to 1 year or several years then you know the effect of prakriti on that particular disease will be less meaning the disease itself the dosha dosha utklesha that happens the dosha aggravation that happens that will override the prakriti context so we we have to concentrate more on disease there rather than the prakriti itself definitely if, if it is a vata that's what i said if a vata prakriti person in vata ja kala that is in the older ages gets a, a motor neuron disease mnd then definitely his lakshanas will be profound more big much um, huge the person will have a lot of complications related with that similarly if a person with kapha ja prakriti 
in kapha kala gets more of uh, kapha ja vikara then of course it will be very uh, convincingly we can say that it is more profound kapha ja disease and here prakruti is also supporting the uh, person's disease conditions but otherwise for example that's the thing and such a type of diseases are not kept under sukhasadhya you observe that what is sukhasadhya one which is produced by one dosha involvement one which is produced by one dhatu involvement or navotita means it is a recent onset and such type of things are kept as sukhasadhya and easily curable by the medicines whereas when multiple doshas are involved then it is present since, since a long time and it is involving various organs deep seated one then definitely that uh, impact of those things plus in a patient when the prakruti is also supporting that then it is a stronger one if prakruti is something different for example if the vataja person in him some pittaja lakshanas are developed then that person will have a, a different type of lakshanas and those lakshanas are comparatively weaker when similar lakshanas are produced in a pittaja person so that's the reason uh, we need to understand for the prakrutis but it doesn't make any influence on such a thing i think that that prakruti has to be analyzed first then only we need to go for the chikitsa no it is not like that uh, thank you sir and a question has come for prakruti ag- aggravation like vata pitta and kapha uh, should we be giving trifala to balance uh, that so it, it again depends on the doshas specifically trifala is told uh, more specifically for kapha and pitta dosha and for vata dosha we can have say ashwagandha and you know the number of uh, disease specific or dosha specific herbs are kind of numerous no we have um, trifala can be used for tridosha javikaras and trifala is one of the best rasayana so for the purpose of rasayana if your intention is that using a trifala then you can go ahead with trifala trifala will not disturb the doshic imbalance inside so it will try to maintain the doshic characters as it is and it is uh, supporting to the uh, the tridoshas so n- nothing to worry about the uh, using of uh, trifala and all those things in a very typical manner no such things are not required we can straight away use trifala for the purpose of rasayana it will not going to uh, hamper or disturb the doshic balance so the question is what is the best rasayana for low bone density a recent onset of osteoporosis champrash ashwagandha kritam shatavari etc so what is the ideal rasana for low do, low bone density my preference will be ashwagandha krita ashwagandha krita if it is possible you can add on with pravala pisti or you can even add on asti shrunkala this is quadrangularis if it is able to take it then it is fine yeah prati it was asked by pradipa ji and she almost nailed it because she had written ashwagandha agritam there congrats for that how do you decide whether include uh, an ayurvedic calcium supplement like pravala pisti or shankabasma in a, in a case of osteoarthritis no definitely see we see we have panchabhautika chikitsa model where if uh, prati tatva is less in the person vata will increase and vata and asti is having ashraya ashri sambandha definitely asti will also get increase so when that is the condition in the similar fashion when asti kshaya occurs vata kshaya vata increases and all these things are interconnected to that what to overcome that we use many a times typically all sudha varkiya dravyas kapardha even shankha which are the cheaper forms of it then we go for the sudha then we also even go for the pravala mukta all these drugs can be used as an alternative for that yeah, uh, thank you sir now i mean this is regarding news uh, does ashwagandha help in recovery of covid a study is getting conducted in uk let me quickly uh, read through it traditional herb ashwagandha is going going to get administered to 2000 randomly selected people in lisister brimingham and london to find out uh, its uh, properties and its benefit in the recovery stage of covid 
and uh, it is an ayush ministry uh, is also indian ayush ministry you know, ayurveda yunani uh, yoga homeopathy and siddha medicines so they are collaborating with them and 500 mg tablet twice a day is going going to to be given for 3 months one group 1000 uh, you know 1000 members each two groups one 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 is for placebo and another one is for ashwagandha so that uh, study is uh, getting uh, you know getting into a good shape and even when the you know in the last year when the covid uh, uh, you know sort, sort of broke out and came into the scene ashwagandha was one of the you know initial contenders that uh, that showed a uh, big promise definitely we have a certain set of uh, drugs like ashwagandha like uh, pippali estimadu guduchi these are very wonderful drugs and they have got very much supportive to the body as well as to the tissue they try to maintain the doshic balance and they have a rasayana effect on the body so any drug which has a rasayana effect definitely it will stimulate the immunity and improve the ojas so that's what ayurveda says so ashwagandha was the one which is a very promising drug and very from the very beginning uh, some people have started claim, claiming that ashwagandha is a good one then people laughed at them but ultimately now turning back to ashwagandha and uh, it is showing a similar type of uh, activity which can be including into the materia medica which can be used for covid and that kind of a large study with 1000 people in one group and 1000 in other uh, with uh, with the support of indian ayush government so those kind of studies are you know they will really help to push the scientific uh, basis of ayurveda these, num these numbers uh, thousand uh, all these things only just to convince ourselves and convince the population otherwise already there are n number of ayurveda doctors already prescribing ashwagandha to n number of patients and people are consuming it but there is no proper data maintained if that data is to be accumulated then automatically your study will be more bigger this a herbal tea question here is ashwagandha ginger giloy herbal tea which is i think readily available in the market is it useful to improve immunity and what is the you know formal political action that can expert sir ashwagandha ginger and giloy uh, ashwagandha ginger and giloy you are making combination and it is in the form of a tea means it is making a decoction decoction of this thing is nothing but kwatha it is useful you can go ahead with that no issue and it will definitely going to improve the conditions and will here in that combination you observe that ginger is added giloy is there ashwagandha is there ginger is the one which is having agni tattva it will promote your agni to absorb these things and ashwagandha and guduchi will be absorbed very properly and it is taken into care and it is a very fine combination no doubt it is a very good one and in that all the three drugs are vichitra pratyaradha dravyas so they don't interact with any other when a particular action has to be brought it should be initiated they will independently initiate that action and other thing will not going to suppress their action that's the beauty of these which is the dravyas and their combination also will not going to hamper and go, moving on to the next question uh, this is an interesting one there is a public interest litigation pil in the supreme court of india seeking direction to ayush to focus on all streams so there is a lawyer who is saying that only ayurveda is getting limelight and uh, yoga yunani homeopathy other things are getting pushed in promotion in terms of popularity and what not so they want kind of a equal stage for all so my initial thoughts are that you know each have you know ayurveda yoga yunani siddha homeopathy each have their own range of uh, uh, you know area area specific to them and all are thriving and uh, someone might not like it or not the range for ayurveda is big you know it comes to dietetics lifestyle habits you know physical uh, you know physical treatments oral medicine so we have a bigger range so that could be the reason why we are getting a broader platform compared to others but it is in no way undermines the importance of other streams of uh, health sciences as well definitely this uh, pal will be treated in a sense that he will be convinced and uh, counseled will be rejected very simple reason for allotting a budget and promoting anything we need to have certain infrastructure when we bifurcate the ayush mantralaya ayurveda yoga yunani siddha and all those things you just go through the numbers 
how many ayurveda colleges are there how many homeopathy colleges are there how many unani colleges are there how many siddha colleges are there how many number of the ayurveda practitioners are practicing how many siddha college practitioners are practicing and all those things the number will it will definitely speak about the volume so accordingly government will allot the funds and promote the things but ayush mantralaya never undermined any of the things whether it is a homeopathy or it is a rikwa or whatever it may be they are promoted each and everything they have allotted the money and they are promoting uh, even every branch of uh, ayush mantralaya it is not a right uh, thing to say that ayush mantralaya is giving only credit or support to ayurveda yeah uh, thank you very much sir um uh, this question is i am suffering from gastritis and irritable bowel syndrome associated with diarrhea so gastritis with ibsd is it okay to consume curd see there are a lot of issues with the curd you should know that what the curd is whether it is a fresh one or whether it is old one accordingly the rasaguna virya vipaka abdu dravya changes so in case of a, a freshly prepared curd it is madura in rasa but still it is guru but it has a probiotics also in that we need to understand even that part of it so it can be helpful in digestion as well as improving the condition but gastritis if it is due to ushnata and if you are consuming curd which is having soreness or the what do you call amla rasa more then it will be amla vipaka ultimately it will land up in trouble so if it is a irritable bowel syndrome with diarrhea the better option is a kashaya dravya like kutaja bilva these drugs are good to you and better option is takra instead of curd dadi dadi is not recommended better one is takra once again we have a lot of misunderstanding regarding this dadi means one which is somewhat thick good look at and plumpy whereas in our uh, general population takra means the same one cup of dadi added with three cups of water shaken well and it is takra no that is not takra that is diluted dadi so we don't accept that diluted dadi having the qualities of takra takra is even though it is ushna it is a grahi deepana so takra means only after churning taking out the navanita butter separating it from it then whatever the remnant is there that is takra and that takra has to be used for the purpose of uh, ibs in those conditions and it will be good and once again that takra also should not be sore in taste if it is sore in taste definitely it is going to cause problem dr sachin kap say uh, welcome to this program uh, he is from maharashtra so please go ahead with your question sir thank you sir can we use uh, butter uh, loni what we said as navneet for the for this condition butter once again butter is comparatively guru in nature if your agni is proper to get digested then you can use it otherwise butter is not recommended still recommendation is gritha because gritha is vichitra pratyarupa dravya and gritha is able to increase the agni in gastritis also many a times we have improper artikshna agni is there it need, needs to be quenched so shamana aushadi is something coolant should be taken where in that gritha is more shitala so that's why gritha is recommended and it will convert the agni to proper so that is better is gritha and takra not dadi and navanita thank you sir yeah uh, i mean that's why you know master charaka in the grahani chikitsa chapter chikitsa sana fitting chapter he explains taraka uh, sorry takra with you know four to eight lines of shloka that kind of unprecedented dietary ingredient getting pushed into a treatment section where you know most probably uh, you know medicines would be expected to be explained so that underlines the you know, effectiveness of takra in uh, irritable bowel syndrome that that is the reason we have one very popular preparation takrarista in the market which is very useful in uh, ibs and pradipa ji has uh, asked like dari madhi churna with takra is good kutajarista is good uh, i i see there is you know drastic improvement in her choices of uh, products uh, your comments sir yeah definitely dari madhi and all these things are very good 
Gadi Master Kachurna, as well as even Bilva and Kutaja. These three drugs are very good along with even Takra. These four things are very good for IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. Next, uh, Padmavatinji has asked arrowroot powder for IBS. It can be given. It can be given. No issues with that. East okay. Indian arrowroot. It can be given. Pradipaji, please go ahead, please. Last question. Between Dadi and Takra, both of them have Ushnaviriya. So, and, but Dadi is mostly um, considered to be like Abhishyandi and blocking. But between these two, which is more heating? Dadi is more heat, whereas Takra has a penetrating capacity. That is the reason Takra is used in many conditions and Dadi is Abhishyandi. It blocks the channels. It should not be used. And if at all, if you want to use it, you have to add extra pepper or moong dal or something like that to that and the car sugar, then you have to consume. It should not be consumed alone. On many occasions, it should be avoided. That's the reason. But it is Thank not you. like that the curd should not be taken. It is not like that. See, for example, if a person is having running nose, rhinitis, there is a watery discharge in the nose. In that condition, first choice is uh, dadi. If you consume dadi instantaneously, that will be blocked. Once it is blocked, then dadi is contraindicated. No further use of dadi in that condition. That, that is a way of handling the things. Interesting. So yes, sugar and I've also read that trifala with yogurt is good. Is that yeah, that can be done. That can be done. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and also between dadi and takra, the sourness is more in dadi than takra. And yes. that and that is kind of sour things are like secreting. Like when we take sour things, the, you know, we start secreting. So that itself contributes to that abhishandi uh, quality. Yes, but and the takra is uh, having a kashaya rasa. Uh, thank you all the participants to making it more lively with your active questions. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. And even I'm so interested to teach. The reason is that the, how interestingly they are participating in these type of things. Uh, it makes me to stimulate me to participate in a more enthusiastic manner and uh, convey my information that will be beneficial for the next generation. I will support the, that activities. Thank you one and all.